Kroger Tender Ray Beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony, transcribed. Ladies, when you have friends in for dinner, you want to serve the very best meal possible. Well, believe me, it's really no problem. When you can build that dinner around Kroger Tender Ray Beef, it's world famous because... No other beef so fresh can be so tender. Still, there is a very definite problem involved. We are sorry, but it's just impossible for us to supply you with that fine Kroger Tender Ray beef now. I'd like to say, sure, order all the juicy Kroger Tender Ray steaks and roasts you want, but I can't do it because there's a shortage of grain. You see, we use only the top quality grades of beef for Kroger Tender Ray and... Beef like that, tender and juicy and delicious, is grain-fed. Nowadays, that good grain is desperately needed overseas to prevent famine in many lands. After we're victorious in the battle against starvation, then American farmers will again use grain for cattle feeding. Until then, until the day you can buy Kroger Tender Ray beef once more, Kroger will always bring you the very best beef on the market whenever it's available. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. And now, heart. In harmony. The strange Professor Rogers has been more strange than ever since the disappearance of Steve Parker the night before his scheduled marriage to Penny Gibbs. Twice he has come to see Penny on what he implies is important business, but each time she has refused to see him. She tells her brother Pat. Pat, I can't imagine what he wants to see me about. Certainly it can't be important. Well, I don't get what he wants to see you about either, Penny. But don't you think maybe you ought to see him and find out? I'm kind of afraid to. I'm afraid what it is. What do you mean, what it is? I mean that... Well, you know how he's always enjoyed teasing me about trying to be an important person. Which you know I'm not trying to be. Heck no, you're not trying... You are. I'm not even that, darling, but Professor Rogers has an idea that I think I am important, and, well, you know how he's always taken every opportunity he could to ridicule me. I, I just think that's what this is about, too. The professor wants to ridicule you? Nonsense. No, it isn't, Pat. This would be the greatest opportunity of his life. I can just hear him say, Well, Miss Gibbs... Well, important and successful, Miss Gibbs, how does it feel to be tossed aside by a man? Oh, no, Penny, you've got the professor mixed up with somebody else. That doesn't sound like Stuart Rogers at all. Yeah, but you've heard the way he's talked to me sometimes. Besides, what what could he possibly want to see me about that... Has anything to do with Parker? Yeah. After all, that's all I'm interested in. That's all I care about. That I want to know what's happened to Steve and where he is and what he's doing and why I haven't heard from him. Now, don't worry, sis. Everything's going to be okay before long. And if anything happens today, let me know, will you? Don't hold your breath till something happens, Pat. I just know I've seen and heard from Steve for the last time for a long time to come. I just know it. Pat, hello. Huh? Oh, Miss Manson. Oh, it's Miss Manson again, is it? Handsome? Don't tell me I'm going to have to start on you all over again. Um, I... I didn't know you were in town, Miss Manson. Oh, I am Miss Manson officially, aren't I? Uh, When did you get in town? Just now. And I came almost straight to see you. Uh, Almost? Oh, I had to go to the hotel first and freshen up. Aren't you going to ask me how I feel? Uh, Sure. Well, don't. I feel terrible. It's a pretty rough plane ride, and... Oh... Just know when I know when Rossville is in a mood to have a good time, I am just sure. Meaning what? Meaning it's such a terrible thing that's happened to your poor dear sister, and I imagine everybody is terribly depressed. Oh, well, nobody feels exactly like throwing a party. Oh, dear, that's what I was afraid of. But New York was pretty boring, too. So I thought I'd run up here to Rossville just to see how things were. Oh, I see. Do you? I think so. How's your dear sister? Very unhappy? What do you think? 
You've done a good job, a darn good job. You didn't keep Parker from marrying Penny with that low trick you played on me. But you got your wish just the same. He didn't marry her for some other reason. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if you had something to do with that, too. <laughs> oh, well, go ahead and laugh. Have a good laugh. <laughs> laugh till you fall over the joy. I hope you're enjoying yourself right now because one of these days you won't. You know, things have a way of catching up with people like you. Oh, so that's why you're being so cold to me. I'm not being cold to you. I'm trying to tell you to get out of Rossville and stay out. Pat, listen to me a minute. You think that I had something to do with Steve's leaving Rossville the night before the wedding, don't you? Well, sure I do. Didn't you? Well, now, you probably won't believe this, but no. I didn't have anything to do with it. It was as much a surprise to me as... Well, as it was to Penny. You're lying. I know you think that. But believe me, Pat, I didn't have one thing to do with it. Frankly, I wish I had. In fact, I wish I'd thought of whatever made Steve leave Penny. Believe me. I guess I do believe you. About that especially. Well, believe me, I had nothing to do with it. Something tells me you didn't. And you're surprised. Plenty. I've been trying to suggest to Penny that maybe you had your fine hand in this. But I didn't dare. I was afraid maybe she'd tear you apart. Tear me apart? That cringing little Violet? Huh. Look, you're, you're talking about my sister. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Pat, darling. But the truth just pours out of me. You don't know the meaning of the truth. And don't call me darling. Oh, Pat, don't be angry with me. Now, you know you'd blow too if you'd suddenly won something you thought you'd already lost. What? You think Parker left Penny for you? Well, he left Penny for something. And I'm sure between Penny and me, he didn't have time for anyone else. So I must be the reason he left. I, if I could believe that, I'd like to. And I'd go right home and tell Penny the good news. Oh, you think it'd be good news if Steve left Penny on my account? Yes. That's a strange thing to say. Why do you say it? Because if Penny could believe that Parker left her for you, she'd know she was well rid of him. You don't think much of me, do you? I never did. I don't know why I should now. Oh, you don't, don't you? Look, handsome. All you know about what's what in life, I have already forgotten and learned and forgotten. Time and time again. You know, you don't like me because you can't handle me, not because I'm not good enough for you and your kind. And the same goes for that sister of yours. You're all pretty silly. But you're good for laughs. So Penny thought she was going to marry Steve, did she? Well, you know what I think? I don't think she's ever going to see him again. What you think doesn't matter much to anyone. No, I don't suppose it does, but I'm usually right. Well, goodbye, Pat, darling. Tell your sister I'm in town, will you? Maybe. Oh, by all means, do. She'd be so pleased to know it. And you might tell her something else, too. What? Tell her that I'll drop around to see her one of these afternoons. I know she'll be glad to have me. We'll talk about Steve. <laughs> She had her nerve to talk to you like that in the bank. Yeah, Penny. And it was pretty bad. Almost everybody in the place was staring when she left. Darling, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. There was a good side to it, at least. A good side? Yeah. You found out Jerry Manson had nothing to do with Steve's leaving. I never believed she had anything to do with it. I'm sure Steve wouldn't have left for that reason. No, nope, I'm just about convinced it was something bigger, but... I'm driving myself almost insane trying to figure what it was. Don't try to figure it out. Wait till... Oh, there's the door. I'll get it. Look, Pat, if, if it... I know. If it's Rogers, you don't want to see him. No, not this evening. Hi, Pat. Oh, hiya, Johnny. Come in. Your sister home? Sure, she's in the living room. Go on in. Thanks. Say, Penny, I'm going out on the porch and fix that light behind the house numbers. Excuse me. Yeah, sure, Pat. Be careful. Don't give yourself a shot. Oh, can be shot myself. Why, I'm a genius electrician. Just hope I don't blow the house up. <laughs> Never have known that brother of yours to be serious for more than ten minutes at a time, Penny. How does he do it? I don't know. He's wonderful. And, uh, speaking of wonderful things, Penny, how are you this evening? All right. Anything I can do for you? Nope. Any word yet? No, not a word, Johnny. Not even a sign of a word. I can't understand it. It's not like a guy to do that unless something awful happens. Let's not talk about it. Well, it's all you think about, isn't it? Yeah. 
Well, then you're wrong not to talk about it, too, Penny. Does it do any good to keep things pent up inside you? Only makes the hurt much more painful, the problem worse, the trouble's bigger ones. I know. I just don't want to talk about him or about it right now. Johnny, I'm just about all talked out. I've used up all the words and the thoughts. There aren't any more. The same old ones over and over and over again. But with maybe new hopes if you go over them once more. It's been a week, Johnny, a full week. A week ago tonight, just about this time, that telegram came. Yeah, I know. And since then, not a word. You know, in a week of constant thought and constant talk, you can think and say just about everything you have to say on a subject like this. I don't think there's anything new or different to be said or any hope that things will be different or better tomorrow. Penny, you shouldn't feel this way. It's not good for you. It's not going to do you any hey, good. Hey, Penny. Oh, what is it, Pat? Professor Rogers is out on the porch. Again? Yes, and he wants to talk to you. What, did you tell him I wasn't seeing anyone? Yeah, but he, he hoped maybe you'd make an exception in his case. Well, why would he think that? He should know by Just now. Just a minute, Penny. Maybe th this is none of my business, and you can tell me so if it isn't, but... I think maybe you ought to see the professor. But why? I really don't know why, Penny. I just think you should. To tell the truth, sis, I've thought so, too, since the first time he was here. I talked to Mother and Jed about him, and they said he seemed to have something awfully important on his mind. Dad, you know it can't be important. I appreciate the professor's interest. Maybe he does want to say how sorry he is, but it isn't necessary. Penny, maybe he's not seeing you for anything regarding what happened, or maybe he is. It doesn't matter. But he's been here several times trying to see you, and I think you ought to see him. He's a nice guy. He's not going to try to hurt you. I wonder. I agree with Johnny Penny. I think you ought to see him. He looked awfully worried when he came up on the porch to talk to me. And he looked awfully pleading when he asked me to see what I could do to get him in. You really think I ought to see him? I do. And so do I. All right. Tell Professor Rogers I'll see him. But believe me, I'm terribly afraid of what he might have to say. What is Professor Rogers going to say to Penny? Why is she afraid? Does she secretly have an inkling of what it is? Does it concern Steve Parker? And how could Rogers possibly know anything about Parker's strange disappearance? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. Friends, you may remember that many years ago, some wise man said that experience is the best teacher of all. In other words, very often we have to learn things the hard way through the trial and error method. Well, if you gave Kroger tender ray beef a trial when it was available, you can readily understand why it's world famous. No other beef so fresh can be so tender. You won't make an error either when you buy and try Kroger's selected seafood. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Visit your Kroger store and look over our wonderful selection of seafoods. We're offering you the finest flavored fish and seafood you'll find in town. The finest because it's fresh caught, fast frosted, and rushed right to the store by Kroger's own special rush delivery system. Flavor is thus naturally protected. The firm white flesh preserved for your enjoyment. Remember, when you buy Kroger's selected seafood, your satisfaction is guaranteed. Get some real soon. Thank you.